It's amazing how many people want to cheat on God and make up with gifts. It's amazing how many people want to cheat on God and then make up. As long as I'm coming home, God, that's all that matters. <laughs> you know, these things happen in the natural. We hear about it. Some of us, we've experienced it. And some of us has even been the perpetrator, perpetrators, right? We did this where you've heard of relationships where, you know, the man or the woman is out there cheating and being unfaithful and being disloyal, doing all types of stuff. But you know what? He takes care of home. At least she comes back home. Now, I don't know too many men that I've heard. I just let that go. But, you know, it may be something where, you know, she's just he's loving on her and being sweet to her and everything. But she's really inconsiderate. Everybody else come before him. She don't want him around until she needs him. So just 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 think of that. You know, people I know people that have gone through that where they have a man that is just cheating. He's not even trying to hide it anymore. And his whole thing to her is I take care of his house. I pay these bills. And, and, and I've heard women say, as long as he come back home to me, then that's all that matter. And so, and so that's all that matters. And so you find there's a lot of people that are still trying to have that type of thing with God. You know, I don't know anybody that would say, well, once we're married, always married. So, you know, hey, I've married my wife. So if she want to go sleep around and do whatever she want to do, I made these vows with her. So I'm not going to go nowhere. If a woman will say, um, you know, I'm married to him so he can go out there, cheat on me, do whatever he want to do, disrespect me. You don't have to be loyal to me because you know what? We're married and that's what it is. You know, we're locked in. Do whatever you want to do. Freedom to do what you want to do, but just know you can come back home. And so there's a lot of individuals that's kind of living that way. I know people never really think about it that way. I've never thought about it that way, but that's just what it is. There's this expectation that God is supposed to be God. Everyone expects God, expects God to behave. God, you have to love me, be merciful to me, be gracious to me, forgive me. If you do anything, if there's judgment or if, or, or if I fall into anything that's unpleasant in darkness, you need to have mercy on me. And if you don't, then you're not a good and loving God. And so this is this mindset, guys. And, you know, we have the gift of life right now where God has given us something that's really, really a precious gift. I heard Rod Pickens say this on his video that no one realizes the precious gift of repentance until it's no longer available. And I'm here to tell you that there are souls in eternity, in eternal darkness that are, that are, are that remembers and that are wishing that they have this opportunity. People are comfortable cheating on God. They don't think about it that way, but that's what it is. People are, are comfortable being you know, having something on the side with God. And then the thing is, they want God to be loyal. They want God to be true to them, no matter what they're doing. And God is calling us out of that, guys. He's calling us out of that. You know, where, okay, God, I believe in you, but I also have these other beliefs as well. God, I do love you, but I hope you understand that I still need to do this. I, this sin, this thing that I'm doing, I just need to do this. But God, please forgive me. You know my heart. I wonder how people will be if they were in a relationship like that. I wonder how, if you can, I'm, I'm wondering if you can remember what it was like being with that girl that you really liked, but she cheated on you. She was, she was with someone else. And you probably didn't allow her to do that too many times. Or maybe you did, but at some point you realized, ah, that's enough. So think of how much more, think of how much more times you've done that to the Lord over and over and over and over again by asking him to forgive you, but doing the same thing over and over again to him. Think of how you have you okay i believe in jesus i believe in god but then i'm you over here 
you know, going to get your palm red and going to buy your your love oils and and your 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 sick baths or whatever else. Think of all of that and and think of how you think God feels. Now, I want you to understand he's not in heaven crying and weeping and eating ice cream and pining after you. He is giving you an opportunity. It is disappointing, I believe, but he is God. He's God, but he knows in his mind the timeline he has given you. Like he may have given you, given us to be, let's say you are going, some people nowadays, it's, you can't even say someone's going to live old. So someone may only have 28 years on this planet. That's all they're going to live. And the entire time God is just giving them warnings all in between grace and mercy, grace and mercy. Cause you're waking up every day. He knows you, what you're going to do. But the thing about it, people may say, well, if God knows what I'm going to do, what, why even let it be there? Because we have the power to not do it. That's why <laughs> we have the power to not do it. Just as how people may, why was that tree there? If, if Adam and Eve was going to mess up because they had the power not to do it. God is not going to put anything. He will not give us anything that we cannot bear or overcome. All right. So we have the power to say no. And so guys, just imagine someone has 28 years on this planet and the whole time the Lord is giving them just intercepting, intercepting, saving their lives, saving them from near car wrecks, all these different things. And they have encounters with the Lord, but they just don't stay with them, you know? And the expectation is people become very dependent on, they don't even realize just waking up is a blessing. They don't think of anything like that. They're just like, you know, they just think they woke up. The, the, all the grace God gives us to be able to move mobility, be able to brush your teeth. These things that is just, it's not, it's a gift because everyone doesn't have it. Being able to look in your closet and say, okay, I want to wear this blue shirt today when there's people that's colorblind. Okay. But the bottom line is he keeps giving you grace and mercy. And let's say, all right, you're supposed to, you were supposed to go at 28, but you know what? You don't even realize that he has graced you with five more years or even added 10 more years to your life. And so here you are at 37, you're about to turn 38 the next day and you're still messing up and you're getting ready to do that one last thing. You're getting dressed to go do it. And the Lord is warning you and warning you. And I find that I, I, from what I have discovered when I hear about things that happen to people right before they pass, there will always be that moment where they felt like they shouldn't have gone or they shouldn't have done this or they didn't have a good feeling, but they just went anyway. And so here's this person that God has given them grace and mercy, grace and mercy all their lives. And they've just been doing what they want to do. Got used to that grace and mercy. They're getting ready to do this last thing that they'll ever do. They're dressing. They don't realize that when they're putting on their clothes, they're putting on the clothes that they're going to pass in. Guys, we don't like to think about this, but we may already have that thing, that outfit, that shirt, the pants, the shoes that you are going to have on on your last day in, on this planet already in your closet. Isn't that creepy to think about? We don't think about it, but it's true. There's that last thing that you have. You bought it and you just bought it because it's cute and you bought it because it's nice. But you don't realize this is what you're going to have on the day you go. And so a lot of times we put it on and we're wearing these things. But this is not the day that you'll be taken. This will not be the day that you're taking. But imagine this person that's going on throughout the, all their life just playing this game being un unfaithful, cheating on God, doing all these different things. And today is the day before, few hours before their 37th birthday, and they're just putting on their stuff, going to do what they normally do. In their mind, they expect to come home as usual, go to bed as usual, ask for forgiveness as usual. And they put on that outfit that's in the closet. And the whole time, God may be speaking to them. Perhaps maybe the days before there was just a call to salvation. They heard this message that really moved their heart, but they just did not follow. Maybe they got that phone call from their mother or their father or someone out the blue just called them. Maybe they see a sign. Maybe they heard a sermon, but they just kept on going. And when they leave the house, they don't realize they're not going to return. And so they have, they, they put something in the freezer and, and, or, you know, bought that ice cream. So how can I have this when I come back? And you know what? 
that ice cream remains untouched because they don't come back. We have lots of grace and mercy, guys. Salvation. No one will be in eternal darkness that will say, oh, I didn't know. Oh, this is just, I'm completely surprised to be here. You understand? And so I'm just talking to you all about taking into consideration the way that you've lived. Only you know, only I know the things that we have done and really sit there and think about God has been the same yesterday, today, and forever. You may in your mind think God has done you dirty and God has done you wrong. But the flip side is when you step into eternity, you see when this person that has complained about the Lord, this person that I, I, I gave you that example, they hit 38, they leave this world. You know, when they leave the world, they're going to know exactly where they are. They're going to know what's going on. And they're suddenly going to realize how much time they spend cursing God, being angry at God, half-heartedly serving the Lord. And they're going to be able to know. You're going to just know. Because when you become a spirit, you're going to just know. They're going to realize at that moment how much, how good God had been. They're going to be suddenly aware of all the ways he had been protecting them. All the reasons why certain things happen in their life. And how they spend so much time cursing him. So much time living for themselves. So much time thinking they can give back to him what he has given to them. They think they can re-gift his gift, you see. And so there's something a man to feel like I'm enough. And as long as I'm, you know, I'm throwing you a couple of bones over here, God, you ought to be grateful. Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. In your life, you want loyalty. If you go to work, you expect to be paid. If someone says that they're going to do something, you expect them to do it. And if they don't do it, after so often, you realize you cannot trust this person. When you're married to someone, you don't expect your husband and wife to marry you and say, well, that's that. Now I can do what I want to do because once we're married, we're always married and I can do what I want to do. We have to think of those things. But somehow sin will enter into the hearts of people to make them think they can do whatever they want to do and still enter into heaven because they're just going to turn into this lovely, you know, angel when they leave the world. This is not true. We cannot expect the way that you expect loyalty and faithfulness. We are made in his likeness and his image. We got that from God. And so we have to consider those things. As I said God is not in heaven crying and pining and rolled up, balled up in his throne with streaks on his face. He's looking at you. He's looking at me. He's giving you every opportunity because if he has to say, depart from me, or if you leave this world and you find yourself in utter darkness, you're not going to be able to convince him to change his mind. So this is your time and this is your now. People are forgetting that God is God. He's not easily moved and he's not going to, you're going to be all willy nilly in your hands. He's not putty. He's not your butler. He's not your Jeeves. He's God. And right now he's given us plenty of grace and mercy, but there's a reason for it because eternity and darkness is a horrible, horrible place. And he wants you and I to have every opportunity to turn to him, to be faithful, to be loyal and to be obedient by the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, guys, peace out.